Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar today with Scott Pulsini. So uh, we do this every Thursday, Bookmap Live Trading Webinar at uh, 10 a.m., and Scott will be trading live. He's a futures trader. You may have read about him or heard about him. Uh, he's been featured in uh, uh, Dr. Brett uh, Steenbarger's book uh, and uh, has a, a really uh, a great uh, trading background here. Um, and she can allude to more. Uh, you guys know he is, or you can read about this uh, very, very quickly here. Uh, and uh, he does offer mentoring and education services. I'll put this into the chat if you're interested in uh, reaching out to Scott. Uh, need to go through the disclosures here, and then we'll jump right in and look at the live markets. And this is important, though, uh, so you know, you know what you're getting involved in uh, with this live trading. Uh, it is in demo paper trading mode. All bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation <laughs> cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Um, risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, that said, uh, let's jump in here. And uh, Scott, I hear you, so uh, I know you're here. Uh, let me uh, turn it over to you. And stream your, uh, your channel or your uh, screen. One second, you can hear me, right? Yeah. <clears throat> How'd you hear me before that? Breathing? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think yeah, I no, I heard you come on. Um, okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you got my screen? Got it. <clears throat> All set. All right. Uh, watching both these equity markets here, <clears throat> I was going to short NASDAQ. There was a stop run a little bit ago right around the open. You can see here. fired off we got a full ATR we got a retest I was waiting for a failure to short that uh, and then we moved a little higher another stop run here so I will do the same with this one so I need to see a full <clears throat> ATR out of here I'll explain why here in a second why this is my conservative entry uh, ATR right now is 21.2 so we need to see you know, 21 and a quarter points out of here a retest failure and I will short this stop will go in ATR above there or outside an ATR uh, ES monster stops just fired off in here. I was going to short this um, area as well. That is disqualified. We had a new event, new volume event right here. You see over a thousand stops. So both these moves up are basically all stops in uh, both markets, which is obviously good information. So let's draw this one. So we have, I have two distinct setups that I trade off the stops. One is the Dumb and Dumber, where you get the stop run. Usually it's a retail trader puke called the Dumb and Dumber. Again, don't be offended. I'm a retail trader now too, but usually they are wrong. Um, and it's not real buying, right? It's just guys puking out positions. And this was obviously a very, very big puke. Um, and then the other one is a stop and hold where the stop run does fire off and then it holds that area. The big money comes in and keeps pushing it higher. So uh, this is a pretty important area across the board here. You see spot gamma. Uh, I'm pretty sure once this liquidity gets their fill, which is, again, big money that they push the market into their orders, and then, then we can possibly sell off from here. We'll Scott, that's uh, really interesting to see the sweeps indicator uh, with the stops there because... Uh, uh, you're getting both you know that those are stops and then the rest is showing you that those are sweeps so you, in just you know half of them or a third of them on the first one and then basically half of them on the second one are stops uh, right exactly pretty so, inform, in, interesting information there 
Right. So in this instance, you could say there is some, you know, big money behind these moves as well, right? Because it's not all stops, right? You had 1,500 sweeps there, 443 of them were stops. Actually, it was a little more than that. And then um, this one, 815, actually, you know, it's showing 852 on here, but it's showing, um, this is my main, I use this, right? This can get a little convoluted as to- S&P stock by ES, 824 contracts. And QI size for sell and Q. 167 contracts um it could get a little convoluted the way this displays on, on chart it's still very valuable but i trade off i draw my zones off of the sub chart so you can see here there's another another 800 stops here so this thing just continues to rip and i may be changing my my potential short thesis this is an important area we'll go over this all in a second once i stop drawing these zones i'm gonna have to probably I'm going to get rid of this first one just because it's, you know, I always default to the most recent setup. So there are a few times I'll play setups on retest and potentially get into that, but let's get this drawn. Got some other stuff in NASDAQ as well. I mean, they, they, some of those others um, can be people, um, you know, it doesn't have to be we just know that the other orders are not stops that's all i mean it could be people exiting uh right absolutely right right i mean the, the bottom line is you just want to see how the market reacts to that area right yeah, when it moves yeah. away exactly so you can see there are some waves of sell ice here and then here is the uh there's the whopper here you have 229 this is nasdaq so we'll draw that zone you see right at, right at a spot gamma level as well. This is a very important area on the chart, which I will show you here in a second once I stuff drawn. All those new drawing tools coming along, Bruce, pretty good. They're all over that. Yeah. I'm, I, I think I got this solution for you, though, is uh, not to draw lines, just uh, draw uh, a square or a rectangle, but it will extend. Right, but the prop, it will extend? Yeah, that's what it's been requested. I didn't know you can. Oh, they don't have, I was like, I didn't know you could do that because I would have been doing that. Yeah, thing. exactly, exactly. So it would be yeah. really easy for you then. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know you saw the stop run here and then sell ice. So this is basically a delayed double whammy. Mm -hmm. uh, double whammy are stop runs into the waiting hands of sell ice. Usually they're right on top of each other. This one's a little delayed. Um, you know it's this whole area basically, but I will trade off of this for my actual entry exits, mm -hmm. depending on which way I trade this. So <clears throat> I was talking about it as far as an important zone. This is basically it. This is do or die as far as shorts are concerned, where this thing potentially could stop. You can see how important this zone. This zone was a very large zone, and you can see the first time up here, it reacted. Now we opened up, gapped up, but this is still a very important area here. So you can see gap down, huge directional conviction, directional conviction, gap down, directional conviction. Three different times we've, we've failed up here. So that's where we're at right now with a volume set up. That's what you look for, right? You look for the, the best trades are important, prior important areas with a real time volume setup. So that's what we're looking at here. So, you know, I'll trade this either way. I, I'm, I'm anticipating this is gonna fail, but if it doesn't, then I'll trade it to the long side. This is the beauty of real time volume. If you're just staring at a chart here, you know, you, it's not it's not hard to, to, to see this stuff, right? And draw this zone, right? But you know, where are you shorting? You start shorting right in the, you know, where this fell first time, you got 130 points that you're eating right now, right? So that's where the real time volume comes in and what's happening right now helps you judge and, and helps you control your risk, so on and so forth. So if you were just say this next time up, you're like, well, this fell here, 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 and here, I'm gonna short right here at the close. Okay, well, where's your stop? You got to put your stop above the zone, so you're risking 200 points on this trade, right? So if you wait for an actual volume event, one, you see that there's interest in that area in real time, and then you also can control your risk much better based on the zone, right? Let's check out our levels. 
call them lugs in the room, so I don't say Ludwig level 85 times in a day. So we've got new lugs in ES. Um, you can see in MQ, we're just at the baby lug here. We call these smaller, these thinner lines, baby lugs. Again, these are Ludwig levels. Go to ludwiglevel.com, ludwiglevels.com. You can get the three, free three-day trial. Say you saw them on book map, and she's got special pricing stuff for you guys. But um, these are the major ones, blue and red. And then you can see you have these baby ones. They, they still, the market still reacts to them, but these are the major ones that I watch. I mean, I'll get out. So say if I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a position, I will definitely especially if these are confluent with something else. Like right now, we know this is confluent with the top of that major zone. I'll definitely pay attention and get out of some. Um, so we are right here. This is a place we can stop. You can see we're at extreme standard deviation of VWAP too, even though this VWAP is pretty condensed. We still are at, so here's VWAP, which is confluent with the yellow lug. This is called daily value area. So this is one standard deviation from VWAP. And then you have, uh, so this is plus one standard deviation, one and a half too. So, Many times, especially when the volume's terrible, which it's not very good right now, these algos kick in and they revert it back towards VWAP. So sometimes it will hug it and continue up, you know, keep hugging the standard deviations. But a lot of time, most times you need to see major volume coming in, meaning relative volume. And you can see here this volume is uh, just another low volume rally. I was explaining in my trade room yesterday. This is just August is, is a month of vacations for big traders. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's usually kind of like December where they call it the Santa Claus rally. It's usually just low volume nonsense. They just keep pushing it up because no one's there to stop them. Right. And it just the default tends to be up. I don't know why, but it's because of the stock market. Didn't they always think it's going to go up or they, they, you know, they say over time you, you're profitable if you just buy and hold, so on and so forth. So the default when the volume is terrible is usually up. So just keep that in mind. So you can see this thing just keeps pushing up. And this is a very, very important area too. So like I said, so anyway, uh, lug wise, my rules as far as these zones, right? So we saw these two zones here, but the major one is the cell ice. If we are above the old directional lug, I wait for a full ATR outside the zone, a retest and a failure, then I'll short it. If we were below the yellow lug and I got a setup to go short, I can go get in aggressively right when we break outside of an ATR. So this setup up here, I'm waiting for a full ATR retest failure. And you can hear this tick strike. They just keep pushing this thing. So this is another thing I use, showing you the, um, the size and the speed of the orders coming in, it's it's a it's a gauge for between one and fifteen. So I have mine set at eleven. You can find discounts on this. You can find discounts to everything I use on my website. Um, but I use this to it helps me gauge. You know, obviously you want to know what the the underlying stocks that comprise the index indices that futures are derived from. You probably want to know what's going on in there, right? So if you get into an important area and you hear these things silent. That's really good information. Then if you hear these silent and you get a, a bearish setup, that's even better information, right? So, and these are obviously the highest weighted stocks in the indices, so that's the ones that I watch. Um, I call this every day basically waterboarding. I, this is essential to my trading, but it, it's a torture treatment. When you got a position on against you, you get to watch it. You get to watch your P&L get smushed, and you get to hear the torture of the, of the buying, too. So. <clears throat> So those are my few of my tools that I use. Um, let's see what's going on. I guess I don't know. Drew that last zone here. Yeah, we, this was the, the latest. So let's see if we got an ATR above here. So ATR right now in here is 4.60. You can see right there. Sorry to be so quick. I'm just used to doing this in my room and glancing over it. But this is just a standard. Anchor swim ATR 14 wilders the average true range it shows you the current vol volatility really helps you judge how, how much you have to risk on your trade right you have so many traders that have this standard risk right I, I put on an ES trade and I like to risk three points well when the ATR is 20 your three points is almost always going to get sought out right because of the volatility this helps this is a dynamic way to place your stops and entries based on the current volatility and that's what we use in conjunction with the zones to figure out you know, is the market, how the market's reacting to this, is it able to get an ATR away from here or is it, you know, once it moves an ATR the other way, that's how we judge how we're going to trade these areas, right? But I don't 
very, very, very rarely will I hop in the, the second the stuff fires off right in the middle of a zone, right? I'd say 99% of the time I'm waiting for ATRs. There, there are certain instances we're not going to really get into unless I see them in this webinar, but um, where I will just hop in in the middle of a zone. So another product I use too, which is we want to pay attention to here, is called the Edge. And this is basically a TAS product. I used to be in a trade room when I first started doing the trade room stuff uh, with the We Trade Desk guys, and they had this. Uh, this is one of the indicators they use. I still use it. It's very important um, as far as understanding what the stocks in the uh, indices are doing are in, in the S and P. You can see Nasdaq and Dow as well. But you can see here right now, this is starting to get back in overbought territory. So many times when this thing pops above the 67% line, it could go all the way up to 90, 95. We've seen that. That's very rare too. But the point is, you want to, you don't want to be chasing the market when this thing gets overbought. All this is telling you is, right now, 70, almost 70% of stocks are that comprise the mini S and P, right? The, or, I'm sorry, the S and P index, 500 stocks, 321 of them are above mm -hmm. their five minute TAS boxes. So a TAS box is basically a mini market profile. So that means a bunch of them are all above it. And when that happens, you get this reversion of the mean algos that kick in as well. So um, yeah, I want to be very careful buying this when this is overbought. But you can see they're just they just keep pushing this thing. There's no one here to stop them. There's no big money to stop this thing. It's just straight up. So very important areas here mm -hmm. that we're now pushing through. I didn't show, well, here's NASDAQ. We did show this. You, you know, you don't really give up on this yet. You want to see this because this could still do one of these and spike and back down. But if this sits and holds above here, then this zone is the next zone up, right? But it's very telling. It just pushed right through there, especially on this volume. So what I was trying to talk about earlier is this relative volume. This relative volume is pretty pathetic especially to be pushing through such an important area right <clears throat> you can see here this is barely getting to normal volume so this is my sierra chart volume uh, again members of my trade room have access to all my templates for my thinker swim for my sierra so all you got to do is just bring this in sierra charts like 35 bucks a month it's very cheap, but it's very, very labor intensive. You know, if you can bring in someone's template, then it's one thing. But other, if you just bring it, if you just get it on your own, you have to build charts. It just, it's, it's very labor intensive. Um, so anyway, you can see this volume. This is showing me. I have mine set at the last 30 days for this exact time periods, right? And you can see this can't even even an ES. Like we're getting this ridiculous move, and this can't even get to normal volume for the last 30 days. Like that's just. This is what I'm talking about, about these guys. They just keep pushing this up because there's no there's no big money in here to stop it. So they just keep pushing it until they get into an area where someone takes some interest. But I, again, <laughs> August is a is a month that is well known to be the, ma the main ma uh, vacation month, right? All right, so regardless of what I think, and I think this is a nonsense rally, blah, 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 it's still rallying, right? So... It, the markets really don't care what I think. So we have now got, got outside an ATR out of this area, definitely out of this one. So now if we go, actually, I'm supposed to be long this aggressively. I was hesitant to do that because of the zone, but we are above the zone. So I pretty much missed this trade. See red lugs at 04. I'm very surprised this is hugging the standard deviation with this volume, but, but it is. Um, so, like I was telling you guys earlier, when we were above the yellow log, I'll get in setups aggressively alongside. So I should actually already be in this trade, but I was too busy chirping right there. So let's see. TR is 21.5. So 21.51. I should have been in this just outside an ATR. I usually go a few points. So 25 points out of here, I should have been long. So that puts me in. stopped by ES. 147 contracts. These markets. QI Siceford sell NQ. 151 contracts. Okay, well, I was going to get in there at 70, but now we have a new new volume event. So we'll draw this and I'll trade off of that. The problem is the red lug now, if I go long, is right here, is right at around 13.6. So I'm not going to go long this setup uh, aggressively, but we'll uh, judge here. Another. So someone is playing in here, trying to stop this thing, but it looks like it's basically <laughs> one player. Not doing too well so far with their sell ice, but 
So, you know, people ask all the time, what is an iceberg? It's pretty amazing to me a lot of, how many people don't know the trade that don't know what this stuff is. They're like, is that limit orders in the book? It's a, these are hidden orders in the order book, right? Because when the big money wants to play ball, if they throw in a 500 lot, I mean, look at the size in this market in the order book. If someone comes in there and puts in a 500 lot, so this was even even this size, what was this, two something? 225. Someone drops a two, 225 order in here, 225 lot order. That's 10 times the volume you're seeing in, in these in the order book here. The algos are are programmed to run away from size. So if I'm like, oh, I want to sell two 200 here, the algos see that because it's visible, and they run it away, and they try to make that person chase this chase the order, get a worse fill, and then they turn around and run it right back. Right. So that's why. The big money uses icebergs because they can hide their orders. So when you use an iceberg, but the retail trader can use icebergs too. It's pretty meaningless unless you're trading big size. But you just have to show a certain percentage. I think it's 10%, right? So if you have a 200 lot sell iceberg, all you have to show is a 20 lot, right? And that was supposed to be 20. So the market comes up there and someone thinks it's just 20 and they just like, I'm going to rip through that. I'll buy that 20 lot. And then behind it is another 180 hidden. And then it, then it shows once it trades, right? That's all an iceberg is. Very, very, very important information to know, right? It's the, it's the crux of my trading. It stops and icebergs in important areas is the whole base of my trade. Um, and if you're not using this information, then you just don't have all the information, right? It, you know, you can stare at a chart all day long. Yeah, you, it's pretty simple to see important areas on the chart, balance areas, consolidation areas, whatever, however you want to refer to it, directional conviction areas. Um, you can see ES is getting up to this one here, and there's actually another setup in here. I want to draw this because I'm still interested in shorting. <clears throat> another, another 547. So my thresholds, and then so the icebergs and stops are one thing, but then different markets have different thresholds that are meaningful. You know, so you don't just trade every spike on this thing, but if they get over a certain amount, you want to pay attention and trade them. So my threshold for ES is 500 you can see here this has already got an atr below here atr is 4.87 so i round up five points the bottom of this zone was 59 it's close to an atr i'll give it a second i think it's going to get there so for this i could trade one of two ways right i could either enter this aggressively just outside an atr which it just touched i think close yeah, so there's an atr I was entering this trade aggressively, I'd be in right now, or just maybe a few ticks lower, I'd be in, right? But in this situation, my rules are normally, you know, 98% of the time, because we're above the old lug here, I wait for retest failure. This particular trade, I actually could get in aggressively because of that zone I just showed you, how important that zone is, right? It looks just like NASDAQ, right? But this isn't, NASDAQ just got through its. This one is just getting into its. So you can see here, we have gap down, directional conviction, directional conviction, directional conviction, really important, and here we are, right? So what I was trying to say is, you know, if you get into important areas, sometimes, because if you wait for retest failure, sometimes you're not gonna get retest failure, right? It's not gonna come back and retest that zone. You if you're willing to be patient and say, well, uh, this area is kind of sketchy, I don't know, so I'm gonna wait for that. That's you know very high percentage trade, but sometimes you're gonna just get that and then you're sitting here with nothing on, knowing it's going down and you, you don't have the trade on, right? So you have to determine for yourself, hey, is this an important enough area where I don't need to see a retest failure, I'm just getting in right now, right? Um, any questions, Bruce, on any of that stuff yet? Uh, no, no, some questions on uh, uh, icebergs, but uh, uh, or how you use them, and I just basically said, well, <laughs> you're co you're covering that, and and there's a class in uh, your trading room as well, so I put the links in there uh, for everybody. Yeah, I have a I have a course. Um, it's in the book, my marketplace on my website as well. That goes over the. I had, now I have six setups. That one was made a couple years ago. I'm, I should have the new one done by the end of this week, and I'm hoping, um, but. Mm -hmm my alarm for natural gas number um but that course explains all the setups what they are what they mean so 
for some of the, you know, I know there's always new traders on here. For some of you guys that don't know, my back history, I used to be a very large scalper, right? So I would trade 50,000 round turns a day. Um, and that was back when the E-mini S&P was only trading 500,000 contracts total in a day. So I was 10% of the volume every day. So that's how much volume I was trading to, to understand, you know, what was happening in the market. And also back then you can see your counterparty. So you can see exactly your trade. So if I dropped in a 500 lot, I can look down it used to be right like right down here on my on my uh, trading technology screen TT and I can see if I sold 500 it would look just like this and it would show me all the houses that I hit so it, sometimes it wouldn't show all 500 it'd be like you know three 340 120 150 and I'd see the different houses that I traded with right and I after a while you start to know who the big the big players are meaning I like they call them locals so that's like a scalper guy that in, in you know when you're at a border trade it's a guy that's in the pit all day long just basically scalping in the pit or on the screen you can see you know every day i can see if i keep seeing the same house i drop 500 in the order book and i and i get filled and i see it's the same house every day you start to learn their tendencies right so the setups are based on I used to see as a scalper how I used to react when I was loaded up with positions, so on and so forth, how others would react. So the, the, the six setups that I use are not hypothetical thinking. It's actual, you know, based on my experience trading millions and millions of contracts. I used to average um, like over a million contracts a month uh, just in the mini S&P. So you know, that experience led me, once I saw this SI indicator, once, once the you know, Bookmap learned to disseminate the CME MBO data, the enhanced data that they came out with. Um, once I saw that, I'm like, this is what I've been looking for to, you know, have my comeback, right? So this is the, I've been saying it every, every day for the last five years, four years, this is the most powerful information you can have in trading. And if you don't have this, inf you're not using this information, you do not have all the information. You know, it doesn't mean you can't be profitable. You could be a great market technician, um, you know, or whatever you're using to trade, you could be profitable, but I'm telling you, you can be 10 times more profitable if you use what you know with this information, right? Scott, I have a question for you. When you were scalping, uh, and it was primarily the uh, S&P E-mini, um, were you also trading other markets? No, I mean, I, I, I just couldn't. You see this thing. I should have shorted this thing. Or maybe way. maybe you were doing some swing trades in other markets, or, or were you just, you just focused uh, on 100%? Occasionally. Okay. You know, it took me, I would sit there all day, mm. every day, just staring at the order book, right? There would be days. So when I what I also preach is, you know, the more, the more simple you can make your trading, the better you will do, right? So I used to literally, I made $15 million for my firm and myself staring at that. I didn't have charts up. I didn't have anything. Now, it doesn't get more simplistic than just staring at the order book, right? And you may be asking, well, why are you doing that now? Well, because now this is over overrun with algos, right? I'm fast. I was one of the fastest clickers on the planet clicking my mouse, but I, I'm not as fast as a computer. And that's what knocked me out of the game of scalping, right? So what I explain all the time is this is, you know, such important information where now I, I feel like I have a huge edge again, right? But there's so many guys that want to scalp that can't sit, you know, there's many reasons. I, I obviously had an issue with sitting through trades, like most traders, right? You put on a you put on a short and then you get this profit and then it comes back and it goes against you. And it's like, that's hard to sit through. That's just against human nature, right? So it was very hard for me to do that because I could pick any style when I first started. And back when I first started, there was no education. The markets had just moved to the screens. So it was like, they literally, at my trading firm, King Street Trading, they sat you down in front of a computer, said, here's your markets, pick a market, figure it out. That was it. There was no training whatsoever. So I had to figure out, you know, my best, what, what suited me the best to trade. And mine was to scalp. But fast forward to today, you got these guys that are trying to scalp these markets. And I even, there's even some guys in my trading room right now that, that continue to not heed my advice and they're trying to scalp. There's so many factors going against you trying to be in out, in out all day. You're not going to make it. You may get lucky for a while, maybe a month or two. You might even be able to do it for a year. I doubt that. But the point is, one, you're going against computers, right, that just whipsaw all day long. And then you're paying, you know, as a retail trader, what are you paying? $4 a round turn, $350 to $4 or more a round turn. 
you're, you're, you're not going to make it. You're going to grind down your account. Even if you are 60, 70% scalper, the commissions will eat you alive, right? So it's, so the, 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 what I'm trying to get at is what you should say to yourself, okay, Scott just said he made all this money scalping millions and millions of dollars. He used to trade a million contracts a month, but he's not scalping. Maybe there's a reason for it, right? I would love to get in here and scalp, right? I'd love to be able to throw around size and push the market around. It, it, you just can't do it consistently because one of the main reasons is, you know, when I was scalping, you would see orders in the order book, like it literally would look like this. And I, I, I've got to get the videos of my scalping. We'll have a special session where you guys can watch what I used to do because I, I used to videotape all my scalping. It's not for kids because I used to swear quite a bit when I was in and out. But this is kind of what Dr. Bruce Steenbarger, he wrote, he wrote, Steenbarger, he wrote the book Enhanced Trader Performance. Well, I'm in that book. He talks about my exploits. He wanted to see how I made the millions of dollars. So he sat behind me for a year. So he's, you're going to see the same thing eventually when I get this on, because the, they're on those mini DVR things. I got to get them burned to disc. But eventually I'll show that and you'll see exactly what he saw, right? You'll see me flipping orders all day long. I'm long, I'm long, I'm long. Get out, short, 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 all day long, right? That's what I used to do. So, and all I used to do is stare at this. So I kind of got off track there. I don't know what I was talking about. But the, the, the main moral of the story is, if I can't make money trading, oh, what I was telling you is back then, size in the order book was real. So this is what I was saying. So if I ever show the videos to you guys, you're going to see it literally look like this. It would be like 2,000, 3,000, 1,000 at each price level, right? So we would come down here and I'd be, I'd look, I'd look underneath. I'd be like, okay, well, there's 6,000 here that I, that I can lean on. If I'm wrong, I'm going to buy 1,000, right? And if the market starts rolling against me, well, it has to eat through 6,000 and I can get out of 1,000 easily because I know there's 6,000. The orders in the order book used to be real. So that made it very scalpable. Now, there's nothing real in here. Yeah, I mean, when you see resting liquidity, that's real, especially the longer it's been in there. We talk about that all the time too. That's a magnet. But most times, you know, you see a 200 lot and then the market gets down here and then it turns into a 20 lot. Well, you can't lean on that. How are you going to get out of the trade? Then you got to, you know, swipe down four or five price levels. So that's the other main thing. You know, it's algo ridden. These computers are faster than you. Your commissions will grind you to a nub. And the size in here to lean to get the hell out of your position isn't here. It just turns into an air pocket, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, you can see it in here. That's what this is, guys. That's why you don't pay attention to this kind of liquidity because they're just guys just putting, you can see as it comes up here, a lot of times the orders will just pull, right? That's not reliable, right? You just get, are you gonna just guess if it's gonna pull or not? So this liquidity is meaningless, right? This is just algos playing games. And speaking of algos playing games, you got this number that just came out. Look, I mean, look at natural gas. This is the most algorithm market out there. You, are you gonna scalp in this market? L look at this, look at these algos playing games in here, right? That's all it is. So it, it's just not, it's not a long-term viable thing to, to do. And again, all you have to say is, okay, you can learn the hard way. There's guys in my room that are, they want to keep scalping. Go ahead. It's your money. Do whatever you want to do. But if I'm not scalping, there's probably a reason for it. I would love to scalp. All right. So I did not enter this trade aggressively. I will wait for retest failure now. Um, you know, I, that's my normal trade, like I said, when we're above the yellow lug here. NASDAQ. And I was doing the same with NASDAQ. I just, you know, I didn't get short there. And I really didn't want to get short there because we were through that zone, I mean, aggressively. But like I said, this could just pop its little head above here and then die. So this is not out of the, out of the woods yet. But this ES trade, I could have gotten in aggressively and I'm risking the retest because this zone is so important. Right? When you get in important areas, regardless of where you are on the lugs, you can say, you know what? I don't need to see a retest. I know how important this zone is that I showed you. I'm getting in. Right? This market's so ridiculous right now with no volume and, and they just keep pushing it. I'm going to wait for a retest failure. And if I miss it, I miss it. There, trust me, there will be more setups headed, headed down. Right? I might not get the best price, but I'll get another opportunity to get in here. You can see this entire move was all stops. This this whole move, stop run, stop run, stop run, stop run, stop run. Right? That just tells me there's no real buying. It's guys puking. Yeah, a couple of these swipes. There's something behind them, but I will definitely play that and not be afraid. You know, 
I'm not afraid, but a lot of times I put on trades and they do not feel good, right? Because I'm human. But I, I like this area. I really like this area to give it a shot. Granted, this market is surprising me that it keeps going up with this type of volume. But I have my setup. I have my rules. So, you know, this is at least trying to pop back to normal for this time of day. Still not that impressive. You know, if I was seeing this, then I'd be like, okay, so this is actually really good volume. This could continue and keep pushing out. But I just don't see the big money in here. So what I was getting at is have to if you want to make it in this business you have to have a set of rules system playbook whatever you want to refer to it as and you need to follow your rules if you have an edge over a large sample size you will make money but you, you know first and foremost you got to make sure you have an edge i know this is the greatest edge i've ever seen in futures trading so i have drawdowns all the time i'm, I'm actually in a drawdown right now right i didn't even put in yesterday i lost again yesterday this is just this has been a tough this is a tough month to trade, and I already know that, but you can see it's like I hit 90 something. Again, guys, this is based on $100,000 account trading. You know, I started out trading ones and twos, and as my account grew, you guys see this risk worksheet in here all the time, right? I put in my, my account size, so this started at 100. So when this was at 100, right, let's say I had to risk 10 points in the ES. Let's say it's usually not 10 points. Let's say I had to risk, you know, 17 points. I could put on a two lot, right? Now, as this build builds, it helps you determine what, you know, risking 2% of your account size, which is the most you should ever risk on a single trade. Now, if I want to risk 17 points, you can see now it's double. And this is how you methodically grow your account. But any trading system, anything with an edge, you're going to see drawdowns. Right, and this drawdown is bigger because I've been trading bigger now because of my PL. But this is what an edge looks like, right? So I can guarantee you, if you pull up any casino profit and loss, any casino in in the country profit and loss statement for a year, this is exactly what it'll look like. They know they have the mathematical edge. They know they will not lose over over time. One hundred fifty one contracts. They won't lose over time, and they just keep. They don't change their rules when, you know, a big whale comes in and knocks, you know, beats them for a couple million bucks in a night. Do they turn around and change the rules? They do change the rules as far as they'll kick the guy out. They, you know, they, they do whatever they want. They're a private firm. Um, you guys, I, I've told my story, I think, in here about my, I'm banned in, in certain casinos for counting cards way back in the day. So they can affect the game that way, but they don't change their overall rules, right? Like if they get beat one night in blackjack, they don't change the rules the next day. And that's where traders make a huge mistake. We'll come back to this, by the way. That's where traders make the huge mistake is they have a couple losing days. Here's your retest, pretty close. You know, I, I kind of retest within two two ticks in any e mini S&P, and that was within two ticks. So now I'll come back to my casino analogy. Same stuff I always talk about, guys, and I know I'm redundant, but. RTYI Siceberg by RT. 153 contracts. You got to remember, there's new traders on here, and you can't hear it enough. The stuff that I chirp over and over and over, you can't hear enough. So ATR right now is 4.93. So that's five. I round up, so I, I'm going to go a little outside five points on this trade. Uh, 59 was the bottom of the zone, so 54 would be five points. I'm going to go three ticks outside that. Um, so that is. Speaking of which, we'll get into this too. I'm doing this a test for my room based on different strategies. Hold on, I don't want to miss this trade. All right, filled in that. Hold on here. We'll, we'll get into this later too. This is Apex. You guys should all be using something like this if you're testing out. Oops. But I missed this fill by a few points. Uh, but this is for the test trade. A lot of guys in here in my room, guys and girls that know exactly what I'm doing here. Well, I'll go over it. But guys, this is this is the this is the pattern, right? Set up, retest, fail. Doesn't mean it's going to go down. It means you have a very high probability of it going down because first of all, this wasn't real buying to begin with, right? Then you see the sellers hitting it. That's what the bubbles are, market orders. Then it retested, no buying again, failure. Over and over and over and over. In every futures market, it's the same stuff because volume drives markets, right? And it's just traders caught, traders having no interest in certain areas, so on and so forth. So you can see here, 
Should have made this. Let's make this bigger. We can trade this too. See if we can get about three. Actually, did we retest that NASDAQ zone? Hold on. This is the problem with doing webinars. I lose track of all these different because I'm on one screen and I'm not. I can't see. Yeah, we didn't get anywhere close to this uh, zone. So. Um, all right, so let's make this buy ice. I try to color coordinate. You know, the buy ice is blue, sell ice is black. Let's get this drawn. All right, so you can see this first spike went all the way up to here. You just want to incorporate all the bubbles. The bubbles are just market orders that, in, that occurred in the spike. Then we came down here and more popped in. That's this all the way down to there. So that's my zone, right? Right, so I, first and foremost, I need to put a stop in here. So we said ATR is uh, 4.91, so five points. So we'll go five and three quarters outside the top of this zone for my stop. I just gotta make sure I have the right size on. I do this all the time just because it's so hard to, I, I have a general idea what I should be putting on. So 60.75, 65, 75, 66 is five and three quarters. That's where I will stop out. So for this particular trade, I'm risking 13 points, right? So that's why I wanna make sure that I am trading the right size. So let's bring this back. I think this is a little less now after another losing day yesterday. Right, so. I could have five on, let's say 13 points. I have six on, so I'm gonna get out of one of these. I got lucky on this one. Usually I figure it out, it's too much size when it's like 10 points against, against me. Oops, I didn't wanna do that. Didn't wanna do that, why did that do that? Right. I say 66, that's my stop. Tick strike. It's not not so waterboarding when it's for you, but when it's against you, it's not so fun. All right. So looks like we're not going to get a chance to short Nasdaq and Q. I call it different names in my room that are, are kind of R rated, but especially when it's not agreeing with me. But I won't do that on the family channel here. Um, let's check out Russell. See what that looks like on the lugs. And we'll look at it and see if it, I think that's an important zone as well. So you you, you, you want to, in the morning, you know, bring up all your markets and, and see. Uh, this, was, this should have been an aggressive entry. Guys, this is why I use the Ludwig levels. They are literally the second most powerful thing I've seen next to book. Book maps run away, obviously, the SI indicator. These things, I mean, they're just, they're crazy. It's crazy. Ludwiglevels.com. Check, check them out. You will not be disappointed. I can't tell you how many traders like get turned on in and I get emails like, oh my God, those things are incredible. Could you imagine these with volume setups? And this is what I actually just missed. You had a volume setup, right? I mean, that didn't quite get to the lug, but it got pretty close. I might get lucky and get a retest failure here. So this ATR <clears throat> is, So you, you want to move the decimal place, right? You can figure out this is just basic math and stuff, but you can, you know, last two digits. So this is 30, this just means 36 ticks, right? So all I'm doing is adapting to the current volatility. That's what you need to do to- NQI size for cell NQ, 153 contracts. All right, so we'll go there in a second. This definitely got 36 ticks below here. Here comes the retest. If it goes retest fail, I, I should already be in this trade aggressively. So what I'm going to do here, so it's 36, so I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go short aggressively. I should already been short this aggressively because I, I take shorts off the red lug, or longs off the blue lug aggressively. So I should have been in 40 tick, just outside the ATR, so 40 ticks. So I should have been in right here. So if this comes in back down here, even if we don't get a retest failure, I'm in this because I should have already been in it. When I got so for my for that test trade, I need I do need a retest failure, so I won't put a short on in that test trade stuff. But we'll go over that too here, um, what the parameters are of that. But then I definitely need a retest failure to put on that trade in here as well. All right. So 
Now let's start looking. I'm sure I'll get filled here, but uh, let's start looking at some potential profit areas. So we're headed to one right now, right? This is an important area coming up here where I'll get out of a couple of these. Yellow lug. So, and, so when you build new lugs, the important area is when you come up with a thesis of what's going on, right? We, if the market's going to remain bullish, it should hold directional yellow, last resort, prior red. So this zone right here is really important. So if it starts to touch in here and I start to see it reject, I'm going to get out of a couple. But like I say, every day in my room, you don't just, you know, unless you can't watch the market, you don't just put a limit order there because if we get down there and all you see are red bubbles, meaning sell, sell orders right through that area, you know, why do you want to get out if there's why do you want to buy if no one else is buying right? so if i see red bubble red bubble red bubble well i'm not going to get out if i see red bubble and then i start to see blue just meaning market buying i'll get out of a couple right fill in uh fill in russell he said 40 so we're going to go 40 ticks above here top of the zone it's me at 26 just going the last two digits here All right, short bolt, that should be fun. <laughs> Nothing surprises me in these markets, right? So I can see this thing just turning around just because it's there's just no one here to hammer this thing. Um, but here's another thing. I should have been a little more aggressive too, but with the NASDAQ, we were talking about this. What do we talk about when this thing is overbought? It's not a green light just, hey, you just throw in a sell order, but you definitely don't want to say you wanted to buy up there and you had this. You're like, wait, that's overbought. I'm not buying. I'm gonna wait for this pullback. And this is had this happens all day long, right? Doesn't always go extreme, but you want to pay. You don't want to be chasing the market when this thing's overbought. Again, this is called the edge. It's through Taz. It's not available to the public right now. I have no idea why. Um, you know, my room has access to it to, to keep an eye on it. But uh, I think towards the end of the year, he said he was gonna come out with a, a better, improved version. But I don't know why it's, it says sold out on the thing, which I don't. It's not like it's a physical product, so I don't really get that. But all right, so we're heading in this area where I'm going to get out of a couple here if this can't push through. You can see, like, this is where you can judge too. You you can be watching these stocks and you're like, okay, they're still drilling these stocks, pretty mo max, pretty close to maximum selling. I'm not getting out until they stop selling. Just another tool you can use. I know it seems like I have a ton of tools that I'm using, but I'm really not, and it's very very sim simplistic. All right, so here we are, yellow lug. This is a good sign, so I could possibly hold here. Other than that, I'm gonna pop out. If I start seeing blue bubbles, I'm gonna get out of a couple here. <clears throat> and this is a new prior zone too. So make sure you don't go like this to try to find bubbles, right? You can always find blue bubbles, keep it relative. Oh, uh, yeah, at it. Right. You see what I'm see what I mean? Like, there's they're not buying this yet. These are getting smushed. They're not buying it, so I don't need to get out. If I see these kind of dry up and I see blue, then I'm gonna get out of a couple. But I'm gonna give this a chance to push through here. <clears throat> the other thing you want to keep an eye on too is the tick. Should we need we need to look at our internals today? That's pretty important. So this is pretty impressive sell-off and the tick hasn't even hit, you know, minus a thousand yet. This is not, well, that's, uh, sorry, that's NASDAQ tick, but this one hasn't either. So that means there could be some room for this thing to get smushed, which I would love. Go to zero today. Right, keep an eye on this. Right, I'll get out of two there. I kind of jumped it right there. I, I should have waited for a complete formation. So if you're still short, you're probably good to go. It's probably gonna drop another 20 points. I just saw blue starting to come in and I'm like, okay, I'm on it too. So one here. <clears throat> All right, so there's your blue. I know this is an important area temporarily, right? You guys, just because you get out doesn't mean you can't get back in either. So as this moves down, I fully expect Actually, there was one in NASDAQ that I need to go back over and draw, but there'll be new setups where you can, and if we get below the yellow lug, I can enter the, the short setups aggressively, right? That's my rule. So this could be heading all the way back. Let's see what I missed in here. That was a very good short there. If you wanted to be aggressive, again, I was not aggressive. 
So here we go. Like I said, once the market starts falling, you're going to get new subs most of the time. I'm going to get rid of this stop run because we've already traded uh, ATR above and below and this one as well. These are all old news. This is the one. So let me draw this first, then we'll talk about this prior zone on a retest. Any questions, Bruce? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, over in Discord, um, <clears throat> Moss is uh, requesting, he says, uh, I think it's a good idea here. Maybe uh, uh, it's antiquated, as you had covered, but uh, maybe um, we can arrange a separate session for your scalping the way that you used to do it. Uh, we have a new dome product, so, uh, uh, you know, maybe that uh, brings back some uh, some memories. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if, there, if there is an edge, I'll exploit it. I would love to scalp, but I, from what I've seen, I mean, you guys, if, if anyone's going to come out with a with a product that is tradable this for scalping, I, it's you. So I, I will always look at and you, you know when you get excited about products, I've learned to listen. Right? We talk about it all the time. You were telling me about the CMM, CME MBO data for about six months. Yeah. You kept telling me you got to look at this. You got to look at this because I was trading my first few bookmap webinars. I was trading stocks because I was so jaded from you know not be able to make money in futures anymore and he kept telling me about it and the minute i saw it and the minute they came up with this si indicator sub chart switch back to futures because i like this I, there is nothing more powerful that i've ever seen and so my point is if he's if he's chirping about this heat map i'm gonna listen but we still gotta get on that one-on-one -on -one, bruce so i can actually yeah. learn it before i start to teach it yeah yeah sure right, so anyway um quickly this has moved atr is only 24 points right so this has moved 24.07, so we can say 24 and a quarter because I round up. This definitely got 20, over 24 points out of here. If we go retest failure, I will go short this too. That should be a lovely time being short all, th all three of these markets. I will do it, guys. This is the point, right? Like, yeah, that'll feel scary, and I'll be I'll be definitely over leveraged. I, I don't almost rarely do I have three products on like ES, RTY, and Russell and Q. I mean, um, and Q. Q uh, NQM or whatever they call it, NQU here, but I follow my rules, right? My my trade is telling me, and actually I forgot speaking of rules, I was supposed to be out of a quarter of these and I just missed this and that sucks. Oh, I, I guess uh, Moss was asking more about like um, uh, that you had some old recordings that he'd love to see them, so. Yeah, so I, like I was saying, they're all on these mini DVRs, so I have to get them burned on a, to a disk or a, a, a flash drive. I know there's services out there. I got there was one someone sent me in the room a while ago. I got to pay to have them put on there, but okay. definitely want to do it because I just want to just for comedy's sakes. Some of the, some, you guys have no idea some of the stuff that I used to go through and going head to head. I used to go head to head with this other local from another firm every day and just screaming yelling it pretty comical all right so we're waiting for but yeah once i get those on we'll, we'll have a we'll have a special session that should be interesting you guys can see me flipping thousand lots and you'll see exactly what i used to do all right um so we're waiting for a retest failure here yes bounced exactly off that area that's why i got out of two right there and look at that right when that right when the blue started coming in that's where I popped out, right? So, you know, I see so many people new to book map using these bubbles to trade off of. You got to be very careful, right? Yeah, in certain situations like that, definitely. But you can't just, these are just market orders coming in there and taking the orders, right? You can't, there's certain situations you can use it, but don't be just, every time you see a red, oh, I want to sell. Every time I see a blue, I want to buy. It's way more than that, right? As far as what you want to be trading off. But they're still important in certain areas like this one there is the one blue bubble out of this entire move here for the five point move that's why i hopped out but i knew i did that because it was an important level right all right so quickly i should have a lot of breath give me some questions first bruce so i can take a drink of water here sure um no it sounds like a, a uh, the Ludwig levels, um, you can, you're offering a discount from your website or do you have to be part of your trading room? Well, trading room has a, their special, uh, I don't know exactly what she gives, just book map viewers. We have special pricing for my trading room as well, I think above and beyond. 
I literally just go to Ludwig levels. I did this big here. I already, her site's from 1982, which is fine. She knows it. She doesn't care. She said it does the job. <laughs> I agree. Come in here, fill this out. Three day trial, say, saw in Bookmap webinar, and she'll have special pricing for you. You can try them out for three days. And I tell you, you will be absolutely hooked and amazed and shocked and so on and so forth. Especially with come back to this to those soybean something's really fired off in that especially in conjunction with book map si indicator vibe setup so that leads me into this right so unless you have other questions Bruce this is kind of probably going to be detailed I'll be talking about it at length so if you have other questions first I'll uh, no away. no that, that was it I think we're, I think we're kind of caught up here on one question okay Oh, there's someone saying like um, uh, Rory from uh, YouTube is, at, is saying there's something like 6K ice on the ES from April to uh, from We're up, April, up at that high there. Uh, 42.55 to, to 42.60, yeah. That's, that's good work. That's what you want to I talk about that in my room all the time. When you see excessive icebergs in an area, mark those track of it on your chart. Exactly. All right, all right, your longer term chart because I have these zones we've done this in here too actually I think it's probably still in here I might have deleted it but I don't think I did maybe it deleted on the roll we would have I would have areas you've seen it before in the webinars where I would draw like put a, a shaded zone on the bar charts where the areas were because look, we're looking at these zones where the market reacted well there's nothing more important than you know huge huge volume areas, icebergs, aka icebergs, you know, that the market is going to react. The market has a has a memory that it's going to react when it gets back up there. And you can see we got right up here and then failed. But definitely, yeah. You know, I'm not talking a couple thousand, but if you there are instances like the one time we saw NASDAQ, it was like 6,000 ice, which is crazy. Other times in the ES, you see, you know, 10,000, 15,000 icebergs in an area, mark that up on your chart and pay attention because you will see a reaction most likely on the, on the retest there. But that's very good that you're keeping track of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, so basically now, since I already got out of a couple of these, then we'll get into this test project we're doing in my trade room. Um, so now I'm just waiting. I mean, I got out, I covered a few. I paid myself for being right a little bit. Talk about that. Now my rules are I either need to see. So baby lug, I'll probably get out of a couple if we get down there because I don't I don't get out of these are baby lugs, right? These little guys, not the major ones. Major ones I get out of the full um, my full position almost always. Baby lugs I'll get out if it's confluent with something. And you can see this one is confluent with. This uh, VWAP. The other thing, too, that I didn't notice, I still got out of a couple. I probably should be out of one more because this is a very important area. This is the top of this prior market profile composite. These are all areas that I get out at. We'll talk about that right here. Pay myself as the market makes money available to me. Lug levels, market profile composite, high, highs and lows and POCs. Web standard deviations, important pre dividing zones. All right, we've talked about most of this stuff today. Right, so this is confluent. What's confluent? So, well, it's when a lot of stuff matches up. So you've got yellow lug, prior prior red. You can see it came right down there, and then confluent with a prior market profile. Let's see when this is from composite. So again, composites are just days merged, and we use the value area of of the composite. The value area is where seventy percent of the trade occurred. You can see this one was from April. When when was he talking about the ice? It had to have been in April, right? Yeah, he said April, yeah. Okay. Um, so you can see this was the bottom of this. This was multi-day, right? So all I do with these, just quickly show you guys. You know, this is elementary for a lot for a lot of guys, but I know there's some new traders on newer traders. So these were single individual days, right? So here was day one, day two, if 
at least 50% of the value area, again, where 70% of the trade occurred that day, overlaps the prior day by at least 50%. This is probably 70% of, of this day overlap the prior day, and then I merge them, right? You merge that. Then this day, overlap that day. You merge that. This is just a range, basically. It's just a fancy way of looking at a range. This day, overlap, merge that. Then what you do is you draw, that's what these blue zones are. They are market profile composites. So out of those four or five days, however many that was, 70% of the trade occurred between 4240, 4180, right? These areas are very important on retest. You can see like over here, we did trade through this a little bit here. We built a new one, but you can see here, it still remained relevant, right? And this is your newer one. These are really important areas you want to pay attention to, to enter trades, exit trades, so on and so forth. So you can see here, and you come up with a story every day of what's going on. So this thing launched out of here today. It's trying. Is this going to hold and do that, or are we going to accept? If it accepts back in, you expect the other side, right? So if this gets back in here, this could come all the way back. You expect that. that that's what happens the majority of the time, right? So this is a very important area right now as far as if this market's gonna finally pull back a little bit. And this can flow in here. So I'm gonna actually get out of one more here because I know this is an mm -hmm. important area. Because like I said, yeah, you can get out. You know, I have my position will be more than half my position I'll, I'll take off here, which is not a huge profit. But as we move down, you're gonna get new setups, right? So well, hopefully, Lately, the, the, the setup's been few and far between just because it's August and it's a horrible month to be trading. But I'm going to give this one, you know, if this starts to roll up again, then I'm going to get out of one more here. I want to keep an eye on this too. You know, if these things aren't getting hammered, then I want to get out of some. One more. Got a whopping $300 profit in Russell. We'll go check our areas in that as well. Let me get out of one more here. All right, yeah, so I still have two on. Now, if you guys are short, congratulations. This thing's going to drop like 30 points because every time the market crashes. Guys, I'm just like anybody else, right? Always complaining, always thinking the market's against me, so on and so forth, right? So I've gotten much better at it, but it's still, it's just human nature, right? You get ticked out every time. You're like, oh, someone, there's a camera over my shoulder. And you notice, right, when I got out, here we go. Uh, it's starting to hit these. That's fine. We still have some on, and there's going to be an opportunity to, to put more on. We almost got a retest of this zone in NASDAQ to give me three three short positions, but we did not. So in NASDAQ, so I, I go within two ticks of the retest of the zone in ES. Um, in NASDAQ, I, it's two points, right, because it's, it's way more volatile. This, didn't, this, only, this got within four points, so I did not retest according to my rules. So it kind of sucks. This one really sucks up here. I wasn't gung-ho about being aggressive up here anyway. Like I said, we were through that zone at the time. But this is doing what I said it could possibly do, right? It poked its head above here. It's important, very, very important zone. A little poke, and now we're back in it. Okay. So all that is, guys, is what do you think that is? Big money, they, this is so obvious. A lot of times it'll pop right through there because they know all the stops are right here based on this. Everyone stops out and then it goes, right? So I had a longer term position on, you guys probably heard it fire off, and I had my stop, like a rookie, right here. I got stopped out and now this thing is, you know, 100 points lower. <laughs> so you, you got you to get out of areas that are, everyone can see if you're, you know, using the stops. And that was right up here. Wasn't really a stop run. Stop runs were more down here, but there was definitely sell ice in that area. All right. So we got that. We got this. So we need this, not we. This market needs to get below. Actually, what so I'm not gonna get up. Remember, I said I was gonna get out of one more at Baby Lug and um and VWAP here. I just took one, one more off here, so I'm, I'll just let this go and see if we can get pushed through here. You know, if it bounces off here, fine. I got it out, it cost me a couple points, big deal. But I really want to see this thing get in here, and then I really want to start seeing some setups. We'll be below yellow lug, so now my setups I can get in short aggressively. I don't have to wait for retest fail, and I think we can make it back down to there. You know, 
this is an area. This could pull all the way back to this latest structure stuff over here. All right, this could come. That's the most recent. That was yesterday. Definitely can get back down to here. Important spot gamma level. Oh, and speaking of which, pretty much called this. So you really want it. So spot gamma, guys, I highly recommend. Those are the levels on my chart. He's options players so he reads his his expertise is reading the options and options activity you've got to remember the options players the market makers are a big um, percentage of the trade in here right so these are the levels that he deems very important where there's high concentration high concentration concentration of of options right so when there's high concentration these serve as support and resistance so because I told you the minute I got out of that thing was going to die. Um, because these are where dealers need to hedge their positions. What was that? Right. Order. I forgot to delete. Um, so these options dealers have to hedge here. So I, you know, he gets really, really in depth. It's really, really interesting. We'll read his, his commentary for today. But I use these as support and resistance. If you if you're below them, you play them as resistance. If you're above them, you play as a support. You can see these pop. Sometimes they'll go a little further, but it's a real, real important sign. If it tries to hold above and then doesn't, that that's that's another just another way to help you read the market to figure out what's going on. You can see here. Told you the second I got out of that last one, I was going to die. I, I've seen this movie before. And hey, what do you know on your setup? All right, so we got to, before I, here we go, double whammy. Now, so important in so many ways. One, I can trail my stop. New setup, right? So this is when I get out of a position if an opposing setup comes in. This isn't opposing yet, but I can add to this now as well. NQI Siceberg by NQ, 151 contracts. I don't know, you guys think this is important information to know? I mean, it's the information. I, I, again, if you're not using this, you just do not have all the information. And if you do well, you would do way better with this information. All right. So anyway, this is the classic double whammy. The dumb money puke into the waiting hands of the smart money the only reason they're smart is they because they can trade bigger and push the market around right does it mean it's going to hold no it could this can break the, you know the odds are this will hold at least temporarily but if this rips through here so first of all let me trail my stop got other stuff firing off a nasdaq and we gotta make sure i'm not missing a trade in uh or my exit in russell so atr is 5.69 so we round up 5.75 I go a few ticks out of there. We'll go six quarter. Why did you guys tell me to get out of that other one? I should have three on right now. So six quarter puts me at 42, 42.50, 42.75. That's where I will stop out of that last. Right. Now, on the flip side, because, because this is below the yellow lug, we'll look at that in a second, I can add to this trade. Right? So I can add to this. What do we say? Five and it's five and three quarters, so six and a quarter. So I'm gonna go three ticks outside there. So 26, 25, 75. I can add to this trade based on this new setup. <clears throat> Got it? Is that clear? NASDAQ action first. Let's, let's see here. We'll come back to the uh, spot gamma stuff. I just want to make sure I'm not missing an exit point here. All right, you can see we're pretty close to the uh, the L lug. Nothing really here, market profile. Uh, so, let's say right around 1988.2. We're almost there right now. So I'm gonna hop out of two here. I'm gonna wait a second though, right? Let's see these things. They're hammering. This is not what the the Russell's made up of different stocks, but I'm you know it's following everything else. So you can see they're starting to buy it a little bit here. I know this is close to the yellow lug. I'm gonna get out of two of them. Hold on. All right. So I will add to that trade. Let's see what's happening. 
my buddy NASDAQ. So you see here, this is large, 159, that's threshold by itself. And then right after that was 251. So you got over 400 icebergs here by ice. So somebody's stepping up, somebody's coming back. Someone just woke up in the Hamptons and said, oh, wait, let me, let me, let me play some ball here. I want to buy here. Because <laughs> there were no real players in here before. I mean, there was icebergs, but I'm just kidding. I, I have no idea if that's happening, nor do you need to know. Nor do you need to know why someone's buying here, right? You guys, so many of you guys get so caught up in the, the why. Why, why, why are they buying? What, are they getting out of longs? Are they covering options? It doesn't matter. Every, every webinar you're going to hear to the day I die. Stop trying to understand why they're doing what they're doing. You're never going to know unless you are God Almighty, right? And you don't need to know. You need to know what's here and you need to know how the market reacts and how it should react, right? And after watching thousands and thousands and thousands of these, I have a system that I trade them. That's my edge, right? And we'll get into that. Hopefully, we got time. Not sure if I could bring my daughter to school today or not. My wife didn't say anything. Um, all right, so I will trade off of this new setup. Let's see where we are. Bug wise. Blow the yellow lug so I can trade aggressively. I just got to be careful not too close to the blue lug, which is still about 80 points away. So ATR in here is 26. So I can short this just outside that. So I'm going to go 30 ticks outside, or 30 points outside. That puts me at 92 is where I will short this. That's going to be fun being short all three. It's going to be a blast. At least I covered some of them. <clears throat> all right. Any questions, Bruce? Uh, yeah, let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, Larry, uh, he's short. He just covered that. Um, Chris is saying the ten, 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 year, 10 year and the bonds are going going crazy. Um, so nice correlation there. Yeah, well, I haven't, you know, I pay attention to that stuff, but it's like, yeah, I, uh, you know, keep an eye on it if that's what you want to like to trade off of, but, you know, let the real time volume tell you. I haven't really heard anything in here today. So, I don't have 10-year on this computer. I have on my other computer. <clears throat> Let's take a quick peek. No thresholds are extreme in this one. Let's see here. So you can see here, 1,900 cell ice right here, another 1,100. So my new course, I'm going to have thresholds for this as well. So you can see all these different products. I, I can't have all these products on my main book map because it'll freeze or I'm afraid it'll freeze. Um, but I'm going to have all of these like soybean oil, uh, hog, lean hogs, cattle, 10 year note. So my new course, hopefully I'll be done by this weekend. We'll have the thresholds for these markets as well, but you can see some the most sell ice of the day is coming in right here. But I'm not currently trading that right now. I got enough, I got enough going on. Um, oh, actually I'm supposed to be out of, I never put the Russell on on this test account. I was supposed to be out of two more. We'll go over these rules for this test account and what we're doing in the room here, but I was supposed to be out of two more at a major lug, which we just got through. Yeah, I was supposed to be out there. <clears throat> so I'll just, I'm gonna get out of two here. So this is another area you wanna pay attention to. Is that right? No, three. Trading in thirds, not in, there we go. All right, um, <clears throat> what's, what's, 
this right here, what do we just bounce off of? Anybody know what this call is called? Gold stock, stock sell GC, 199 contracts. I'm not, I'm not messing with gold today. Not, the market is the biggest whipsaw nonsense in the history of the planet. I've already explained what this is. Anybody remember what I said this is? Or anybody know? You should know. Anybody chime it in? No, Bruce? not seeing it. As our very good listeners, this is called daily value area. It's one standard deviation from VWAP. These are areas where algos kick in, right? These are the extremes. That's all these bands are, right? That's not like I have 45 things like all these different channels and RSI and all this other stuff, right? I keep it very simple. All of these are extreme standard deviations of VWAP. There's VWAP, here's the one standard deviation, here's one and a half, here's two and a half to the upside, two. Pay attention to these areas because these are where these algos kick in, especially if there's no big time volume coming in, right? a good cover magical lugs right covered a couple right there right off the yellow lug. so i will now hold my remaining position until i see blue lug or an opposing setup that turns bullish then i'll get out other than that i hold on to the position guys this is one of the biggest probably the biggest issue with traders they can't hold on to trades because one they're looking at their pnl Told you guys before when I finally took off and started making millions of dollars is when I turned off my PL and stopped looking at it and just traded. Traded what I knew and what I was seeing. You're pleasantly surprised at the end of the day as long as you have a stop, you know, where you, your broker stops you out in case you're getting killed and you're not looking at your PL. Um where I was going with that. Uh completely forgot that would come back to me. What was I saying on that Bruce? Were you listening? Yeah, yeah. I mean um not looking at your PL um, and doing well after um, you took that off your chart. Oh, oh, right, right. So the biggest biggest mistake traders make is they can't hold on. Every time it does one of these, they're, they're panicking out, right? I have my rules. My rules are set. I don't get out until I get out of a major lug of a couple, especially when it's confluent with something like a yellow lug or major lugs. You can't get down in other areas where you can piece out. Like I said, we'll go over that here in a second. But other than that, I will hold this now until for the, for this account, whether until I get an opposing setup or as you lug the other way. And that's it. Like, I'm not questioning anything. I'm in the trade until I see one of those two. A new rule I have implemented because, especially in crude, like, I'll be waiting. So say it'll be like down here. This happened, I think I showed you guys last week. That was pretty much greed on my part. It was like right here. And created it actually was on the upside but it got right there and i'm like well it didn't touch the lug and hey there's no new setup and i let the thing come like 180 ticks back and it stopped me out so i have an imp implemented a rule if the market moves two atrs two five minute atrs away from the area that's my third reason to get out so let's implement that right now right see they're still pounding these stocks 43 so that means just outside so double the atr for five minutes that's 86 ticks let's round up to 90 so 90 90 ticks out of here is where i will cover this just not to, in case it slows down and nothing occurs i don't want to let this come back all the way and, and then stop me out right so that's something you can employ i've just done that recently because i'm sick of watching things come back so that would be 50 so that would be right here all right so that would still be a decent profit so that's canceled other than that, I'm holding for major lug or an opposing setup. So I can do the same thing for ES too. Oh, what was that? Oh, that was my order. Mike, I didn't put that in there. I have a bad habit of doing that, by the way. That's one of my weaknesses for getting stuff in the order book and then finding out I have position later in the day or whatever. Um, so anyway, the same is going to apply to this. 6.2, so just say six and a half, 13 points. We'll go out just outside that, 14 points back above here. I'll step out of this. That would be outside two, eight, two, five minute ATRs because the market shouldn't come back that far if it's going to continue lower, obviously, right? So uh, we'll just go from here. 
So that would be 38. So I'll be out there. And if you know, if, if you do that and you're in the middle of the zone, get it outside of the zone. So I didn't have that problem here. Don't stop out in the middle of the zone. Make them get back through this volume event. Oh, that was my I, that was an order of mine. That was my ad. Sorry, guys. Not very sharp today. Um, all right, so that was my ad. I don't know how I forgot about that. You know, when you're talking about 45 things, you tend to forget. So again, ATR is now 6.07. This makes me very nervous to add here just because I know these markets, right? I'm waiting for this to snap back, but it's my rolls, right? So I just follow my rolls. I don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't never, you know, you never know what's going to happen, right? All you know is your rules and follow your rules. You can't control the market. You don't know what's going to happen next. Put on the trade. This is probably not the best place to add here. Now that I see the spot gamma level, it could definitely bounce off of here. I'm contemplating whether I want to cover a couple of these out of here. Let's get out of two of them here. I just know, you know, I know this has moved down pretty significantly. This is an important support level. We'll, we'll read that here in a second. So I don't need full size on right here. So, it's, you know, sometimes, guys, you got to make some, use some judgment in certain in certain areas, right? I know, you know, I use these for support and resistance. So why the hell am I entering right on it, right? So I still have some on as an ad, but I'm not going to add full size. Um, my stop for this is going to be 6.16. So we're going to go just out, so round up six and a quarter, three ticks outside there. So it's seven points. So I will stop out at 43 quarter. Top of the zone is 36 quarter. Actually, I'm sorry, 36 half. Uh, that puts me at 42 half, 42 three quarters. Is that right? No, no, I said seven quarters, sorry. So 3650, 4350, 4375 is my stop for this new ad. So I'll get out of two, two ATRs. If it comes back to ATRs on the original position, and then I'll hold the other one until it stops me out a full five minute ATR above the top of this zone. This is not the best place to be at it, no, like I said. Still on that. I will still short this. Oh, I am. I'm short this too. This should be fun. <laughs> I'm short all three. All righty. Here we go. 28.64. So I'm going to go like five points outside that. Puts me at 34, 33.64. So I'm going to go 34 points outside here. So I'm going to stop this one. Uh, let's see, 34, 66 ish. This might hurt, but follow my rules. Okay, so many trades I put on, and even in my room, I'm like, this does not feel like this is going to work, but I, I have my rules, and I follow them. I, this is where traders get into trouble, too. They're too subjective, right? They've got all these cross signals coming in. Well, this is kind of like I did with the spot gamma, but that's a major area, right? I still put on the trade. I just lighten up. The point is, you got all these things where you're like, I don't know. I don't know. This has gone so far. I, I don't know if it's going to keep going. Well, you're never going to know anything. Just follow your rules, right? So I'm, I'm curious, short. Scott, on that. Like, uh, how often uh, do you find that, uh, you, like, right, 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 right now you are um, uh, unsure about it, but you got to follow your rules? How often does it work out, do you think? Well, my gut feeling used to be the driver of my trading with my with my scalping. Now my gut feeling is wrong probably 80% of the time. <laughs> so really? that's why I have rules. Because you got to remember, these a lot of these algos are, they know human nature and they know, you know how guys respond to certain areas or how most traders will respond, so on and so forth. So it's, it's, it's pretty shocking to me that my gut feeling is completely opposite most times, right? So it's like, I can't tell, and I still have a weakness. You know, I, I'm trading multiple accounts. You know, some of them will be like, well, this feels like it's gone down far enough. I, you know, I fall, I try my best not to do it, but I still make mistakes sometimes, right? Like this one just feels like this is going to rip right back, right? Because that's what this, these markets usually do. But, um, you know, I, I just, I try my best to follow rules. I mean, I have my, my stop outs in place. So it's, you know, if it comes back, it comes back. It could just keep going. So you don't know. So you, all, all you know are your rules. If you have an edge with rules, you will make money over the long term, right? So that leads me to this. So 
And this will probably be it for me. Um, so we're going over in my room. Um, this is just literally verbatim. A lot of, well, I've added a little bit to this, obviously, but this is out of trade in the book, Trading in the Zone, right? So incredible book. The first part of it talks about why you do certain things and, you know, why you're afraid. Like, for instance, you're afraid, I'm afraid that this is going to pop back, right? Well, there's a reason because I've seen this rip back. So you have that in your mind, like, oh my God, it's just, so an analogy he uses is a, is a kid that gets bitten by a dog, right? So it's like, you know, after he got first, he, he found all dogs friendly. So that's kind of like in that too, when you first started trading, you put on your first winner or maybe you put on a series of winners. You're like, wow, this is, this is easy, man. Wow. And you're just making money. And all of a sudden you take a monster loss. That's like getting bit by the dog. Right. So now you have that <laughs> getting bit by the dog in your, in your subconscious, kind of like I watched these markets so many times, just rip straight back up. That's why it's it, it, hard for me if I was just trading by gut to put on another short here. Right. But the point is, so that kid now thinks every dog is gonna bite him, right? So like, I think every big down move is gonna snap back in my face, right? So obviously not every dog is gonna bite him and not every move is gonna snap back. Some will just keep going. This may go a hundred points. You don't know. All I know is to trade my areas, my volume setups and my rules, right? So that's what he talks about in the first part of the book. And then he gets into this. So. You have to create a belief that you're a consistent trader first and foremost, because if you don't have that in your subconscious, you've never experienced it, then you, you don't have that to, to, to fall back on as far as just read the book. I'm not a psychologist, but this is what this is what this talks about. Right. So this this is, you know, you can see this in here, but I have this in my room as far as the rules and everything. I posted this. Um, I'm a consistent winner because I objectively identify my edges. So. I get a setup, whether I think it's going to, this is a, you know, I feel like this is going to go back up. I still took my trade because I objectively am watching the market action. I objectively know that this double whammy, it got a full ATR below there. That's an objective view of the market. I'm not, you know, and or the other way where I'm just not, I don't just keep adding unless I see something else because I think something's going to happen. I let the market tell me. So the, this is my edge. I don't know if you guys know about this, but I've mentioned it once or twice or 5,000 times. Um, and speaking of that mean dog, this is it's trying to do that to me. Uh, I, pre I predefine my risk in every trade just outside an ATR for both entries and stops, right? So important. I was going to do a webinar for the public for this. I still may. But you guys are getting some extra stuff here you know, that my room is getting. So I already know, you see me place my stops, right? I know why I'm gonna get out, where I'm gonna get out, and I put my stop in and I, if it comes back there, I don't move it, I let it play out. You can move it if the ATR starts to shrink or expand, but that's, you know, it's nickel and diming it, right? You, you can keep an eye on it and be like, okay, ATR just expanded, I'm gonna move my stop a little bit. But you don't move it because you think something's gonna happen, like, hey, I think this is just a, you know, a nonsense pullback, it starts to come up here and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna give this a little more room and then do that. And then it comes up, oh, I'm gonna give it a little more room. Very easy to do, another huge mistake most traders make, right? So I, pre I predefine my um, my risk. I completely accept the risk or I'm willing to let go of the trade. So I know if that pops out, pops back, stops me out, I'm willing to let go of it, wait for my new setup. And trading correct size to my risk, one and a half, two percent of my account size. So important if you don't follow this, you're going to blow out your account. It's almost 100% eventually. <clears throat> I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. I pay myself as the market makes money available to me. So these are some of the areas I get out. You've seen them all today. Lugwood levels, market profile composites, highs, lows, pointy controls. Pointy controls, just the, the exact price where the most trades occurred in those areas. VWAP, standard deviations. We've talked about every one of these things, important predefined zones based on candle structure or, or an opposing SI setup. This is where I get out. Right. I continue to monitor my susceptibility for making errors. This happens all the time for me. I, I've had one day last week I was didn't sleep and just just don't make good decisions. Right. Then got killed. Make sure if you're feeling these, then you just cut down your size or don't trade that day. The markets will be there tomorrow, always. Right. So. Um, seven, I understand the absolute necessity of these principles of consistent success, and therefore I never violate them. This is straight out of trading in the zone guys get the book the audio book they got it you know obviously the written and also on uh um, kindle 
you need to create the experience of trading mechanically and respecting rules. So this is what trading is. It's just putting the percentage, putting the market in your favor, putting the, the edge in your favor. And that's all a casino does. They know mathematically they have the edge. So they keep letting players play and they know by the end of the year they're going to be profitable. Same thing with this stuff. You're going to have drawdowns because it's a percentage game. The object of this exercise, so this is the exercise I'm doing in my room, um, is to convince yourself that trading is just a simple game of probabilities and numbers. Genuinely puts the odds of success in your favor. You can think about trading in, in the appropriate manner, the five fundamental truths, which is down here, and we'll get that in a second. You can do everything you need to do over a series of trades, and then like a casino, you can own the game and be a consistent winner. Truths, anything can happen. You don't need to know what's going to happen next. So this is all the stuff I've been talking about today, right? Like, I think something's going to happen. Anything that can happen. You don't need to know what's going to happen next in order to make money. I know my setups. I put them on. And if they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. I know they work overall. I keep putting it on. There's a random distribution between wins and losses for any given set of variable to define an edge. Read this closely. There is a random distribution between wins and losses for any given, given set. This should be given of variables that define an edge. That means you are going to be stopped out many, many times. When you have an edge, your equity curve will look like that. And then every moment in the market is unique. So even if we get the setups and you've seen it 45,000 times before, like me, it still means something could happen, something can come in and negate that, right? I'll just go over this one last thing and we'll say this other one, my actual strategies. You got to join my room to see that, or maybe we'll, I'll have a webinar. But um, I got I to gotta keep some. I guarantee my room guys are like, what the hell, man? What am I paying for if you're giving all this information out for free? Learn to trade an edge like a casino. The purpose of the exercise is to convince yourself that trading is just a simple game of probabilities. Until you can accept that, you are not going to be consistent. At the micro level, the outcomes to individual edges are independent occurrences and random. Just like a casino guy. A whale comes in and wins a series of hands in a row. They're on 600 grand. They know at the macro level, the outcomes over a series of trades will produce consistent results. This is what an edge is. You can be the casino if you have an edge that genuinely puts the odds of success in your favor. I know I have that. And you can think about trading in the appropriate manner, the five fundamental truths. That's it. Then, like the casinos, you will own the game and be a consistent winner. So... That leads me right into your next guy that's coming up. Um, hopefully you guys are learning a little bit. I'm actually taking it on the chin here. So this, my, my fear is, it's, it's not founded yet. I mean, this is just back into the zone, but I follow my rules. If this loses, it loses. If I get, this comes back, I stop out, on to the next trade, on to the next trade, on to the next trade, like a casino. Any questions, Bruce, before I bail? Yeah, so, uh, uh... Do you ever feel that trading just a few instruments might be more profitable uh, and require less mental space? Of course. I mean, some people don't have the mental bandwidth to watch. I'm watching like 15 markets to keep an eye on 15 markets. You hear them, you hear all the stuff firing off in the background, right? Some people just can't do that. I, I just have a large capacity for that. That That's what helped me become a scalper where I was able to process stuff firing in the order book you know, nonstop. And, and, and trade it right but it doesn't mean you just stare at one market and that is a huge mistake and for some reason everybody likes to stare at this i was going to use a bad word there yes right this is not the ideal market like in my opinion right yeah i mean we caught some winners in here today but you should not be, because when this market is dead or nonsense or algos like it's been you're going to be forcing trades because many traders that are trying to do this for a living you have to pay your rent. You got to you got to put food on the table. Well, what are you going to do? Just staring at a screen, not trading, is not going to put food on your table, right? And that opens up the mistakes where you just start forcing trades in bad areas, and then you lose money, and then you start this downward cycle, right? So you want to have between, you know, at least more than one. I say three to five that you keep an eye on, and you just wait for your setups. And, and you know, this is why I show this stuff so you guys can trade like I trade or try to incorporate some of my rules. Doesn't mean you have to do exactly what I'm doing. Like I'd say every webinar. This is the science. How you trade them is the art, right? So you, you want to be able to, um, I lost my train of thought again, I'm getting tired, but 
what was I saying before that, Bruce? Sorry. Uh, you know why someone's texting me and it threw me off. So five, different, me five different uh, markets and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So you want to have multiple markets that you're watching. So if one sucks, two suck, three sucks, there's always something firing off. Everyone asks me what what main, when they get the Ludwig levels, they're like, which market should I watch? I say they're like, I already have ESNQ, RTY. What are my other two? I say, you know, usually crude oil. It's been very hard since the war, but crude oil and I would say soybeans. Those would be my top five to watch if you're going to add markets, right? Get the Ludwig levels for those, set them up, set up your alerts on your SI indicator, set up, you know, if you, if you don't have, your, you, know, you get my course to find out what the thresholds are so you don't have to watch thousands of setups to figure them out yourself, then you're ready to go. And then you wait for, you set up your voice alerts. It's, it tells you when something's firing off that's meaningful. You come draw your zones, you trade your zones with, you know, with rules. And that's all you need. But I'm telling you, staring at one market, especially this piece of, you know what, is not the answer. You're, you're going to force trades when it's crappy and it's been crappy and it's probably going to continue to be crappy. You're going to get very seldom moves like this in, in August just because it's, uh, you know, there's no big traders in here. Like I said, overall, you know, there are some, obviously, we've seen some nice birds and stuff. Um, so that's that. Anything else? <laughs> no, no, I think we're uh, we're all caught up. Uh, um, excellent, Scott. So um, yeah, thank, thank you very much problem so you guys see where my stops are here there's a guy in my room that i'm not going to name him but he's a really 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 bad trader right now and he's refusing to learn but for some reason he gets in and he's always like well what are you doing i don't understand what you're doing i mean these are the orders guys like you saw where i got in these are where i'm getting out it's it's slapping you in the face so he gets a verbal lashing every day so if you guys like to hear verbal lashings come out in my room even though i vowed i'm not going to do it anymore because it's getting ridiculous but he's he, usually I, I kick people from my room that are just terrible traders and they keep posting nonsense like it's not good for the room but this guy particular guy is so bad he does everything wrong at a trader he does opposite of what you should do to be a good trader i'm letting him stay in there for now because it's opening the eyes of a lot of people in there like, wow, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of stuff that this guy's doing. So it, it's actually good to have him and he's pretty comical. But other than that, he's really, really bad. So if you guys want verbal, here's some verbal lashings, head over, head over to my room. All right, so this NASDAQ popped up and it never, you know, this is where I stopped this. So let's just make sure this is an instance where you want to make sure your ATR is correct. So you see this popped up to 28.3. So let's say 28 and a half. What did I say? What did I put this at? 20. What's that, 35? So I can actually pull this in a little bit. I don't have to risk a full. This is where you can adjust as the ATR shrinks or expands. That's when you can move your stops around a little bit, but not not ridiculous, right? All right, guys, I'm out of gas. A lot of talking. Hopefully you guys learned a lot today because we went over a lot of stuff. This is the most important. Get the book. Um, if you want to see the test trades we're doing in my room, we're doing, we have three right now that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're doing one at a time. The first one I'll, I'll let you see because this is showing you how important the stuff is, or how you can literally, you can just trade these setups. The first one is just to show everybody that this is such an edge, you can just trade off of these. So here's a trade test. Any threshold setup that has an ATR retest fail, taking three ticks outside the five minute ATR with above exit rules. So the exit rules right here, right? So meaning, I'm not, you know, we've been looking at zones and market profile composites and stuff like that to help help come up with a thesis. For the first test, all I'm doing is drawing the zone. I don't care where it is. I don't care if it's at a major Ludwig level. I don't care where it's at. ATR retest failure, I take the trade either way. That's it. And I, I will promise you it'll be profitable because I did it last December for an entire month to show the room that this is the ultimate edge. Then when you can start adding in important areas, like Ludwig levels, zones, with everything we've talked about today, then you have a really, really powerful edge, right? So this alone will make money, that that first test. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it on the Apex Trader. So once again, go to my website. There's uh, the discount codes on there. It's like Pulse E50, I think. Do Apex if you're trying to learn. You know, if you don't have the money, don't be risking your account. If you're learning stuff, you're learning, risking real money. Go in there, use it for test testing, and hey, if you do well, then you're funded. If you don't, all you're losing is the the the, the money to, to enter the thing, which is like, you know, hundred bucks or something. It's it's nothing. So, I'm not going to get into that today, but that's a very good uh, alternative, so you don't blow out your account while you're trying to learn stuff. All right, Bruce, I'm out. Thank you for having me. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, uh, excellent. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, and I uh, put your um, uh, contact information uh, both in Discord, also in uh, uh, YouTube there. So if you guys have any questions, or you got a, you got a link to his marketplace uh, course, his his website, his trading room, his email, etc. So, um, all right. Well, we'll connect uh, next Thursday then. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks, Scott. Bye. Bye.